Hello, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk about Carlo Gesualdo's complete madrigals. I knew you've been waiting for this one, haven't you? Everybody needs a Gesualdo madrigal collection, not only because the music is magnificent, but because it's, it's so much fun to listen to. And it just so happens that Naxos, Naxos, that amazing label, Naxos, has a Gesualdo magical collection complete, all six books of them, and it's absolutely magnificent. It's performed by the group Delicie Musicae under Marco Longhini, and the performances are simply magnificent. It really as good as anybody out there. You know, it used to be that back in the day when we were younger and just starting our collections, that we would get our Jeswaldo and other madrigals on high price specialty labels, you know, because they were hard to come by and they were done by by sort of these strange aggregations that we'd never heard of somewhere in the bowels of Europe. You know, they would emerge and record for small private labels that were that did beautiful work. I mean, there's another Jeswaldo series on Glossa. There's some others on other labels. They're wonderful. They were expensive and hard to find. But Naxos has made them available at a reasonable price to everyone. And the performances are every bit as good as where you'll find anywhere else. I'm going to play you a little bit just so you'll see what I mean. Because these perform these performers today are extraordinary. And there's so many more of them than there are record labels willing to record them. And so you can pick and choose. And fortunately, Maestro Longhini and his group of seven or eight voices have made a spectacular set of all six books of madrigals. That's a lot of madrigals, actually. But, uh, you know, a hundred and some odd madrigals, we can live with it, right? See, the interesting thing about Gesualdo, if you don't know his history, he was a prince. And he was famous not just as a composer of wildly revolutionary Renaissance music. I mean, his dates... Let's get his dates here, 1566 to 1613. And he was famous for murdering his wife and her lover when he caught them having a tryst together. He lied. He said he was going out hunting, and then he came back and knocked the door down, and there they were in bed, and he murdered them both. And then he, of course, had to run away and hide for the rest of his life in order to avoid his wife and her lover's relatives who wanted to kill him back because it was the Renaissance, and that's what people did back then, right? And so he actually didn't quite hide as much as they thought he did because he was a prince. He lived in an, in an estate, in a palace, and he, he, got, he got out periodically, especially to Ferrara, where his second wife was, who hated him because she said he was abusive and perverse and weird and into whips and chains and bondage, and, and he probably was. He supposedly had a couple servants who he had beat him every single day so he could show his penance for having murdered his first wife and her lover, even though as a nobleman who caught them, he was acquitted of any sort of wrongdoing, but he certainly was devout in his weird, perverted way. And so uh, he was and, and brooding and depressed and, and oh, all disturbed in all kinds of ways, all of which was really good for music, you know, unfortunately. I actually had a friend who was a dominatrix in her spare time. And she was always looking for good music to play when she, you know, for her clients. And I suggested Cheswaldo madrigals and they work really well. So if you have any friends who are dominatrices or, you know, if maybe, well, I won't say you're, you know, uh, tending in that direction, Cheswaldo's your guy. If you're into bondage and self-flagellation, you definitely want to hear Jeswaldo. Now, here's an example. I'm going to play you a bit of a madrigal from the fifth book. It, it's called Merce Gridando Piango. It, it basically, it means, oh mercy, I'm screaming and crying. Now, you can imagine what that does. These, these madrigals are beautifully beautifully scored. They're mostly five voices, but occasionally six or seven. And and of course, there's all kinds of, of tone painting with the actual text. 
So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm screaming and crying. You know, the dissonances are shocking. I'm not going to play you just the opening. I want to play you something in the middle. So you hear the, the range of harmony that Jeswaldo employed, which really, quite frankly, was not, not going to be done again until the late 19th century, until you get like Tristan and Isolde. But anyway, here's a bit of it. Listen to a minute or so. Extraordinary, isn't it? And this is typical of his late style. Now, one of the nice things about having the complete set of madrigals is that he didn't start writing like that. His his first couple books of madrigals are standard Italian madrigals with kind of normal harmonies, but they're all about the same thing, you know, love and longing, and you know, you know the story. They're very, very beautiful. They're all they're all wonderful works, but you can actually hear his progression from book to book. And, you know, the more extraordinary and extreme his style became as he became himself more sort of obsessive and depressed, you know, and, well, you know, kind of generally fearful and and maybe insane. It's quite possible at the end. But again, we don't care because it's what the music sounds like that matters. So if you're looking to experience Jeswaldo complete and really one of the the high points the true high points of renaissance music and the italian madrigal which is it's so they're so beautiful anyway and there are millions and millions of them and you know at some point we're going to have to get through monteverdi and some other people as well you know this is a great place to start because with only only six books of madrigals on six or seven CDs. It's it's a manageable quantity. You can dip into them at will, listen to a few of them at a time. And the wonderful thing about these performances, you know, under, under Longini here, is that they are not, I mean, I've heard, I have a bunch of recordings of these pieces and I have, I mean, Merce Gridando, Piango, or Piango is one of the ones that gets performed a lot. And so I have a lot of versions of it, and most of them are a bit quicker than this, but here he decompacts the polyphony. You can hear the individual lines with those weird attenuated harmonies going in different directions at once. I think it's just wonderful. It's a wonderful way to to savor the richness of the vocal timbre, the colors, the, the, the very, very different quality of the voices at work. He's not trying to create a sort of compact, blended, smooth, you know, uh, basically, I think, kind of bland sound. He wants each strand in the texture to stand out and to have its own feeling of independence and to let the singers really mouth the words. You also get a terrific booklet with all of the texts and translations because it really, really helps to follow along um, with the text so that you can hear the word painting and see what Jeswaldo does with these these wonderful poetic texts that he's setting. So I cannot recommend highly enough that you give yourself the opportunity to listen to some Jeswaldo. It's not for everyday use, you know. Remember, I have to just digress for a second. Pardon that I plonked this down and this vibrated. Remember, remember when Gramophone, Gramophone used to write about performances that were extraordinary and they would always say, well, this isn't the one that really got me. This isn't the Tchaikovsky Potatique for regular household listening. And I would just like say to myself, what Tchaikovsky Potatique is for regular household listening? I mean, how regular 
can it be when you want to listen to Tchaikovsky's Panatique? It's a work for a special emotional moment in your life. Jez Waldo is like that too. You're probably not going to haul these out and play them every five minutes, but there are moments when nothing else will do. And they don't just have to be during uh, moments of you know, bondage or sadomasochistic uh, foreplay. You could actually enjoy them while you're cooking or doing normal things because the music is simply emotionally gripping. It's emotionally amazing. So here you are, the complete Giswaldo Madrigals on Naxos. Another reason, as if we needed one, to keep on listening. Thank you. And if you enjoyed this talk, please uh, take off your leather goods and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye-bye.